How did the Apostle John survive being boiled in oil? Hey there, history buffs and curious minds. Welcome to incredible stories from history, faith, and the Bible. Today we're diving into a story so wild, so unbelievable, that it'll make your jaw drop. We're talking about how the Apostle John supposedly survived being boiled in oil. Yeah, you heard that right. Stick around, because this tale is going to blow your mind. Before we jump in, do me a solid and hit that like button and subscribe. It really helps the channel, and trust me, you won't want to miss our upcoming videos. All right, let's get into it. Number one, who was John? Let's kick things off by getting to know our main man, John. This guy wasn't just any old Joe from the Bible. John was one of Jesus's inner circle, part of the big 12 apostles. But he wasn't just any apostle, he was known as the one Jesus loved. Talk about a special connection. John wasn't just hanging around in the background either. He's credited with writing five books of the New Testament, the Gospel of John, three letters, 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John, and the mind-bending book of Revelation. This guy was a heavy hitter in the early Christian world. But here's where it gets really interesting. John was the youngest of the apostles, probably in his mid-20s when he started following Jesus. And get this, He's believed to be the only apostle who didn't die a martyr's death. Instead, he lived to a ripe old age, possibly into his 90s. But why? Well, that's where our crazy story comes in. Number two, the world John lived in now. Before we get to the good stuff, we need to set the scene. Picture this. It's the late first century AD. The Roman Empire is at the height of its power and they're not too thrilled about this new religious movement called The Way. That's what they called Christianity back then. The Romans were all about keeping the peace and maintaining control. And these Christians? They were shaking things up. They were refusing to worship the emperor, talking about a king above Caesar, and generally being a thorn in Rome's side. So, what did Rome do? They cracked down. Hard. We're talking imprisonment, torture, and executions that would make your stomach turn. Christians were being fed to lions in the Colosseum, used as human torches to light Nero's gardens, and subjected to all sorts of horrific punishments. And right in the middle of all this chaos, our boy John. Number three, the boiling oil incident. Okay, here's where things get wild. According to early Christian tradition sometime around 95 AD, the Roman Emperor Domitian decided it was time to deal with this troublemaker John once and for all. His bright idea? Boil the guy in oil. Now let's pause for a second and think about how insane this is. Boiling oil. We're not talking about a warm bath here. This is oil heated to temperatures that would make your skin melt off in seconds. It's a method of execution so brutal that it makes your average crucifixion look like a walk in the park. The story goes that they brought John to Rome, to a spot near the Latin Gate. They had this massive cauldron of oil, heated it up until it was bubbling and spitting, and then they tossed John in. Number four, the miracle. Now here's where you'd expect the story to end, right? Guy gets thrown in boiling oil, guy dies a horrible death. But nope. According to the tradition, something absolutely incredible happened. John didn't die, he didn't even get hurt. The story goes that he sat in that boiling oil like it was a nice, warm jacuzzi. Some versions even say he was preaching the whole time, turning his execution into an impromptu sermon. Can you imagine the faces of the Roman officials? They're standing there, expecting to see this guy suffer and die. And instead, he's chilling in the oil like it's no big deal. Talk about a plot twist. Number five, the aftermath. So what do you do when your execution attempt goes sideways in such a spectacular fashion? Well, if you're the Romans, apparently you throw up your hands and say, fine, we'll just send him to a deserted island instead. That's right. After the oil debacle, they exiled John to the island of Patmos. It's a tiny rocky place in the Aegean Sea, about 37 miles off the coast of Turkey. Not exactly a tropical paradise, but here's the kicker. It was on Patmos that John reportedly received the visions that became the Book of Revelation. So, in trying to silence John, 
the Romans inadvertently gave him the solitude to write one of the most influential books in Christian history. Talk about a backfire. About a... Number six, the sources now. I know what you're thinking. This sounds like something out of a movie. Where's the proof? Fair question. Let's talk sources. The earliest written account we have of this story comes from a guy named Tertullian. He was a Christian writer who lived about a hundred years after the supposed event. In his work, The Prescription Against Heretics, he mentions John being plunged into boiling oil and emerging unharmed. Later, Christian writers picked up the story and ran with it. Jerome, a fourth century scholar, adds some details. He says it happened in Rome during the reign of Nero, which is a bit different from the Domitian timeline but hey, ancient historians weren't always great with dates. Now here's the thing. We don't have any contemporary accounts of this event. It's not mentioned in the Bible or in any Roman records we've found. So, historically speaking, it's on shaky ground. But that doesn't mean it didn't have a huge impact on Christian thought and tradition. Number seven, the symbolism. Whether or not you believe the story happened exactly as it's told, there's no denying its powerful symbolism. Think about it. John, immersed in boiling oil, emerges unscathed. It's a powerful image of faith triumphing over persecution, of divine protection in the face of mortal danger. For early Christians facing persecution, this story would have been incredibly encouraging. It's like saying, look, even if they try to boil you in oil, God can protect you. It's a message of hope in the darkest of times. Number eight, biblical parallels. The story of John in the boiling oil isn't mentioned in the Bible, but it does have some interesting parallels with other biblical stories. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from the book of Daniel? They were thrown into a fiery furnace but emerged without even the smell of smoke on them. Or how about Daniel himself, thrown into the lion's den but emerging without a scratch. These stories all share a common theme, faithful followers of God being miraculously protected from certain death. In a way, John's story fits right into this tradition. It's another example of God's power triumphing over earthly authority, of faith overcoming seemingly impossible odds. Number nine, John's later life. So what happened to John after his brush with boiling oil and his exile on Patmos? Well, tradition says he eventually returned to Ephesus, a major city in what's now Western Turkey. He reportedly lived there until his death, continuing to teach and lead the Christian community. There are all sorts of stories about John's later years. One says that even in his old age, he would be carried into church meetings, where he would simply say, little children love one another. When asked why he always said this, he reportedly answered, because it is the Lord's command. And if this alone is done, it is enough. Another story tells of John running after a young man who had fallen into a life of crime, showing that even in his old age, he was actively trying to bring people back to the faith. Number 10, John's unique position. John's survival of the boiling oil, if it happened, and his long life put him in a unique position among the apostles. While the others were martyred relatively young, John lived long enough to see the church grow from a small persecuted sect to a significant movement spreading across the Roman Empire. Imagine the perspective this gave him. He had walked with Jesus, seen the crucifixion and resurrection, experienced the early days of the church, endured persecution, and then lived to see Christianity begin to take root across the known world. That's a front row seat to some of the most significant events in Christian history. Whether you see it as literal truth, meaningful myth, or something in between, there's no denying the impact this story has had. It's a testament to the power of faith, the strength of the human spirit, and the enduring appeal of a really good story. Thanks for sticking with me through this wild ride. If you enjoyed this deep dive into Christian history and legend, you know what to do. Smash that like button. Drop a comment with your thoughts and hit subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell so you don't miss our next video. Until then, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep seeking the truth. Catch you on the next one.